Hey everybody, welcome back to another week at the uh, One Number YouTube channel. We appreciate you dropping by again. Uh, what we're going to dive into is looking at uh, an idea that was originally brought to me by a colleague named Tim. So Tim, you know who you are. Shout out to you. Um, thanks so much for inspiring uh, this week's video. Uh, so you can see on my screen, I'm looking at a dashboard here that talks about a 60 day sales trend. And I'm just keeping it simple for the sake of our example today. Um, so at the top, we got a worksheet that's essentially just trend lines, kind of just showing us, okay, what's happened with sales, where were our high points, where were our low points. And then down below, we've got a map. And for today's video, that map is just filling space. Um, something I've noticed that can happen with uh, lines in Tableau, like you've noticed here with these trend lines, I'm just labeling the first and last value. Um, but Tableau is not really always that great at building in buffer space. And so what I mean by that is sometimes these longer labels like 5410 end up running on top of the line and kind of it looks kind of messy and sometimes you can't really see the numbers if they're clashing with the colors of the line. So I want to look at today, how do we get those labels so they're just slightly outside the ends of the lines? Okay. So let me go back to that worksheet first of all. And, and these are essentially what are called spark lines. You see these a lot with something like uh, looking at stock prices or just trying to compare a bunch of segments of a business at once. So in this case, to kind of do this the true spark line way, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna edit my axis uh, for sales by region. And I'm gonna say that each region can have an independent axis range. So that means that even if our central region does less sales than elsewhere, it's the top of the range is gonna be the highest sales value, um, even if that's not the highest somewhere else. So normally Tableau has it so that all axis ranges are the same. What we can see here now, like South goes all the way up to 4K, whereas Central just goes up to about 2K. Uh, since I've already made it clear that this is a sales trend, I'm just gonna right click and deselect show header on the sales axis. <laughs> Might be a bad idea, but we're going with it for now. And this is pretty good. Uh, so we'll just kind of take a look at what this looks like. That may have helped the label, didn't really. So um, there's something else that I want to do to kind of clean this up now. And actually, let me go ahead and remove this. I was just doing some tests on this. Uh, we'll, we'll start this from scratch. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to add some trend lines just a little bit outside of the end of each of these lines uh, to be able to provide that little bit of buffer that should be able to help with the labels. All right. So I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'll just call this uh, min date uh, minus 10 days. So what this will look like is I will say date add day comma minus 10 comma min date. Okay. And if you're following along using your own data sets, this date could be any date field, just whatever date field that you're using on your worksheet. So there's my min date minus 10 days. And I'm gonna create another calculated field. I'll actually just duplicate that to keep it simple here. And this will just be max date plus 10 days. So that you can figure out where this is going. Max date plus 10 days, clean this up. So we're gonna add 10 days instead of take away 10 days. Instead of the min date, we're talking about the max date. So what's cool about that is even if the filters on this worksheet change and there's a new date range, it's still going to be adding 10 from the end or subtracting 10 from the beginning. So let me go ahead and grab those two fields, max date, min date, plus minus 10 days. Put those on detail in the marks card, important step. And in order to be able to reference them correctly from the date axis at the bottom, what we need to do is to make them continuous fields. So I'm going to hit the drop down and select continuous for max date and then same thing for min date. Okay. So now I want to add each of these individually as a reference line. So I'm going to go to my date axis, right click, add reference line. Now let's start with the minimum reference line. So I'm going to say the scope of this line is it's going to go across the entire table. The value is going to be min date minus 10 days. Give me the minimum of that. It's probably fine. No label, no tooltip, and no line. So I'll set that to none as well if it's not already. 
okay? So basically, there's just an invisible reference line here. We can grab it if we really wanna show it off, but you know, most people would never see that. So now we're gonna do that same process again. Right click, add reference line. Entire table, this time max date plus 10 days. Change this aggregation to maximum. You can see it just built a little bit of space on the right side of our sheet. No label, uh, no tooltip, and set the line to none. So it looks like a lot of space here in the worksheet, but I think it's always important to go see what that actually looks like in the dashboard because that's where it really matters. And you can see that, yeah, 10 days actually might be more space than we need. We definitely have freed up this first label here so that 5410 is not running over the line anymore. But that makes me think, well, maybe five days would be plenty. All right, so that's kind of the beauty of this is that then changing it is pretty easy. So instead of max date plus 10 days, I'm just gonna do a quick calculation here and change it to plus five. And then same thing with min date minus 10 days. I'll just change this to min date uh, minus five days. So I can just kind of keep tweaking it like that until I get it to look just the way I want. Of course, you know, you could keep going. I think you get the idea though. Um, so that's a really great way just to build in a little bit of buffer if you're labeling your line ends and you just feel like they're kind of running off the screen or running on top of uh, your lines or something else that's going on in your worksheet. So yeah, thanks for following along for this. Another fun one. Uh, thanks again, Tim, for inspiring this and uh, we'll look forward to catching you on another video very soon.